AutoLine Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. Here are today's top headlines. The government lines up financing in case GM and Chrysler declare bankruptcy. Honda announces a major management shakeup. And the presidential advisors in charge of saving the American auto industry don't buy American cars. Up next, we'll be back with the news behind the headlines. This is AutoLine Daily for Monday, February 23, 2009, and now the news. Even though GM and Chrysler say they don't want to go into bankruptcy, the U.S. government is lining up the loans needed to carry them through a bankruptcy, reports the Wall Street Journal. The Obama administration is treading lightly on this one because it does not want to make the UAW angry. It's completely opposed to a bankruptcy, too. The journal says it'll take the automakers two years to restructure going the way they're already going, or even if they went into Chapter 11. But if they did a prepackaged bankruptcy, they could get it done in about two months. In Tokyo this morning, Honda announced major management changes, starting with the CEO of the company. Takeo Fukui, the former CEO, is now going to the board and becoming an advisor to the company. He's been replaced by Takanobu Ito, 55 years old, who also once ran Honda R&D Americas. Honda also moved three other senior executives out of operations and onto the board of directors and retired three board members to make room for them. Germany's economic minister and the U.S. Treasury are looking for ways to save Opel. According to the Associated Press, the German minister will visit the U.S. in March to hold further talks. Opel says it needs 3.3 billion euros or about $4.2 billion. German officials insist GM first must come up with a proposal for the future. Opel employs about 25,000 workers in Germany. Chinese car maker Shandong Baoya Vehicle received nearly 5,000 orders for its electric car from the United States. According to Gasgoo.com, the EV can reach a top speed of 80 kilometers an hour and can be fully recharged within five to eight hours, enabling the car to run 150 kilometers or a little over 90 miles. The cars are priced between 30,000 and 35,000 yuan in China, which is about $4,400 up to just a little over five grand. Ahead of next week's Geneva Motor Show, Audi released a couple of photos of the high performance TT RS, paying homage to Audi rally cars It'll be powered by a turbocharged five-cylinder engine with well above 300 horsepower. As part of its PR hype, Audi provided a sound clip of the engine to show off the distinctive five-cylinder note. You can listen to the rest of this engine sound clip on the John's Journal section of our website a little bit later today. The Detroit News reports that of all the members on the presidential task force on the auto industry, very few own American cars. Information is not available on all the members, but most of those vehicles are imports. No further comment necessary. Coming up next, a look at the brand new 2010 Mercedes-Benz E-Class. We'll be back right after this. Changing tires out here could be dangerous, but with these tires, I don't need to worry. Bridgestone. The E-Class is the most profitable car Mercedes makes, thanks to its sales volume and its price. The newest version is redesigned inside and out, offering loads of technology and a fresh take on that familiar Mercedes style. Designers coupled strong character lines with different surface treatments to give it a muscular, dynamic look. Probably the most striking part of the car styling is its new front end. The front end of the new E-Class shows three most important design aspects. First, a consequent further development of the four eyes face, which now ends in a kind of diamond, almost cubistic uh, design, which is very logically shaped into all the chamfers and lines on the fenders and coming from the hood. The second thing is the status-orientated, steeper and more pointed grille, 
which shows more status and more brand, again, which is very important for this car. The third aspect is the further developed, very three-dimensionally shaped uh, front bumper, which gives the car a wonderful stand on the street as well. In keeping with the new exterior, Mercedes also remodeled the cockpit, giving it a stronger, more industrial appearance in the process. Buyers of the 2010 E-Class have a wide range of options to choose from. Across the range, Mercedes offers 10 exterior colors, 8 upholstery combinations, and a choice of wood trim. And beyond all those options, there are three suspensions to choose from and four engines, ranging from gas and diesel V6s to a monster AMG V8. Tomorrow, we'll take a look at some of the technology Mercedes is offering on the new E-Class. You're not going to want to miss it. Also, we'll be posting a longer video all about the new E-Class design on the John's Journal page of our website a little bit later today. And that's it for today's top news in the global automotive industry. Don't forget, you can get podcasts, transcripts, and a lot more at our website, AutolineDaily.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Visit our website for even more great content all week long. AutoLine Extra, John's Journal, Podcasts, and even more. So click over and get the inside view at AutoLineDetroit.tv.